Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining today. And I'm uh, grateful to be here speaking from the traditional territory of the Lekwungen speaking people, the Esquimalt and the Songhees. Today, we receive the latest report on the effect that COVID-19 has had on employment in our province. This morning, Statistics Canada released the labor force survey results for the month of May. This survey reflects job and employment information polled between the week of May 10th to 16th before BC's gradual reopening began. The numbers continue to show a volatile labour market across every sector and in every region of our province. In British Columbia, we did see an increase of 43,300 jobs in the month of May as people shift back into the labour market. But we also know that others were not able to find employment right away. And so that, in fact, increased our unemployment to 13.4%. We are beginning to see some glimmers of increased confidence, but we also know we have a long road ahead of us to recovery. Overall, we've seen job losses of more than 353,000 since the pandemic began. Young people have been severely impacted. The youth unemployment rate hit 28.9%. In total, we've seen 115,000 job losses since the pandemic began among youth. And that's really a reflection of the sectors that are suffering the most, accommodation and food services and wholesale and retail trade. Those sectors still continue to lead all other industries and in job losses making up 46% of the total jobs lost. And I just want to pause a moment after reflecting on those numbers because we have to remember that those numbers are families, they're individuals, they're small businesses who have really struggled and are continuing to struggle as we move into recovery. That's why we acted quickly as a government and put our supports in place through our COVID-19 action plan. And it's why we're now focused on restarting our economy in a careful and planned and safe way. One of the measures that we brought in through our action plan is the BC Emergency Benefit for Workers. That adds to federal income supports for Canadians who've been without a paycheck during this challenging time. As of today, more than 521,000 people in British Columbia have received the $1,000 one-time benefit for workers to date. Our government also worked with the federal government to expand the 75% wage subsidy for workers. We know businesses need our support as well. We also took action just this week for hardest hit businesses that are struggling to pay rent as we banned evictions for those businesses if they fit the application for the federal program. And next month in July, eligible British Columbians will automatically receive a larger climate action tax credit the normal payment would be as we increase the payment for low and modest income families. The job numbers are really concerning across the globe. It's not simply Canada, we see the challenges across the world. But we also know that as more and more workplaces safely reopen in British Columbia, our economic recovery is going to start taking shape. A big part of that restart plan and the cautious approach we're taking supports businesses by building up British Columbians' confidence that they can go out in their community, that they can shop once again, that they can head to restaurants, that they can get their hair cut. All of those things in building up that confidence through a safe and measured approach to restart will really help us when it comes to economic recovery. As the restart progresses, we're going to continue to focus on health and safety, of course, always first. We're weighing the needs of people and businesses and we'll build on the relief and recovery programs based on those evolving needs. Despite COVID-19 impacts, BC continues to be an economic leader across this country. And that fact, combined with people's exceptional cooperation in managing the healthcare crisis, puts us on a very solid foundation for economic recovery. In the coming months, we hope to see more positive results as our economic recovery starts to take shape. And everyone in BC can take pride knowing that they took part in this. It really has been exceptional to see people pulling together as we fight COVID-19. And we will see that same cooperation, I'm confident, 
as we come into our economic recovery and as we see BC start to adjust to the restart and move into economic recovery. Thanks so much and I look forward to your questions. Okay, as a reminder to everybody on the phone, please press star one to enter the queue. Uh, you are limited to one question. If you have a follow-up, please re-queue up and we will come back to you if time permits. Please also take your phones off mute. You will not be audible until I call your name. First question is from Justine Hunter, Global Mail. Thanks, good morning, Minister. Um, I'm just wondering if you can talk a little bit about the, the shifts in, in a, on a sectoral basis. Um, you know, you've got a lot of the job growth here is a combination of food services, uh, retail trade, um, not necessarily what you guys used to call big family supporting jobs. So um, just wondering if you can talk about that and who's, who's benefiting here. Well, I think it's very early on, and I think that's important to note when you look at these numbers. This, these numbers came before the restart uh, had actually begun. So I think, as I've been saying all along, we really need to watch the trend. Um, I think we see some glimmers of hope in this trend uh, when you see the number of jobs that actually were created. Uh, it doesn't touch the loss of jobs. Uh, the huge number of loss of jobs uh, over this time period. But I think it does show that you're starting to see some confidence. Uh, you're starting to see some confidence in the economy when people are getting back into looking for work. Um, they see that there's an opportunity for them. So I think that's why you see some of those areas of retail, uh, in, in the area of retail, in the area of restaurants, in the area of hospitality. But again, those are still hardest hit. Even if you look at where the changes have occurred, those industries are still much harder hit than other industries. That's why you see the youth demographics. That's why you see the youth uh, unemployment continuing to increase because youth tend to be uh, the individuals, the largest number of individuals working in those areas. So I think it really shows as we move to recovery in the economy that it will need to take a, a different kind of focus. It will need to look at where the largest job losses are. It will need to look at demographics, it will need to look at sectors, and then lead to look to the future to how we provide support for youth through job training and other areas uh, to be able to, to really see our economy fully recover. Next question is from Vaughn Palmer, Vancouver Sun. Prime Minister today announced $14 billion in assistance to provinces to help them recover and emerge uh, um, economically uh, will be subject to negotiation between federal and provincial governments. Uh, have you been uh, given any indication of what uh, Ottawa is looking for from BC on this or how big a share of that money British Columbia could look forward to? Well, I think you, you pointed out what we'll be waiting for, Vaughn, which are the details. Um, we certainly are keen to, to partner up with the federal government, just as we've done in the pandemic time period. We're keen to partner up and see where we can get the best bang for our buck and we can combine our efforts to be able to look at economic recovery. Um, but I'd like to see the details. I want to see how much, uh, how many resources are coming to British Columbia. And I heard a long list of areas that it's intended to cover. So again, we'll want to see see which areas the, the Prime Minister still sees being cost shared with the federal government, how much is coming simply to British Columbia for us to determine where our priorities are. Um, so we haven't received those details yet. I know we'll be working on them in the upcoming week. Lisa Cordasco, CHLY. Uh, good morning, Minister. Um, the Premier's Task Force, which is helping to advise government on the way forward economically, does not include a representative from the, specifically from the tourism sector. Um, this is an area uh, that you've been focusing on this morning in these numbers. Um, is it, does it concern you that this group seems, um, you know, heavily weighted toward the resource industries, which contribute exactly the same amount as accommodation to uh, the province's GDP? Well, in fact, the, the Premier's Economic Task Force uh, is there to be able to give us the read from their organizations, their provincial organizations on the ground. Uh, it's not to determine the, the recovery plan. That will be determined by Cabinet, obviously. Uh, you will see ministers as they're doing now, and I know the, the Minister of uh, Tourism, Arts and Culture has been out already uh, talking to their sectors. So we're directly working with the sectors themselves. Uh, I know that tourism has sent in their ideas and their plan as well, just I think in the last 
last day or so. Uh, and so we'll be gathering all of that information from the individual sectors. We'll be going through what is possible with $1.5 billion, what's short term and what's long term, and looking at how we provide that support. So it's not a sector by sector table by any means. Uh, we want to work directly with those sectors to be able to get the information through the ministers and then back up to Cabinet to make decisions. Next question is from Richard Sussman, Global News. One of the things we saw yesterday, uh, Minister, in the uh, uh, presentation from Dr. Henry was around this idea of increasing our contacts too quickly. Should the economy be looked at the same way that until we get a vaccine, we're likely not going to be operating uh, anywhere close to 70 or 80 percent of normal? And that should mean consistently we will be um, that far below projections in terms of the economy? Well, I, it's certainly why, as you've seen, the Premier introduced, uh, out, coming out of COVID, our restart uh, before we look at full economic recovery, because it's critical that we build confidence uh, in our recovery. Uh, it's important if you open up stores or you open up restaurants and the public doesn't feel safe and doesn't feel confident in attending those businesses, then you haven't or actually done your recovery that you need to. Um, and so the slow and steady approach, uh, taking our direction from Dr. Bonnie Henry, uh, I think ha certainly has been uh, working for us here in British Columbia, uh, and we're going to continue that. Uh, and that will mean that it will take some time to be able to see the recovery happen. But, you know, making sure it's done properly, making sure we build that confidence, making sure it's done safely, uh, is the best thing we can do for economic recovery. Next question is from Carla Wilson, Times Colonist. Carla? Okay, we'll move on to Rob Shaw, Vancouver Sun. Well, hi, Minister. Just following up on the $14 billion from the Prime Minister this morning, it looks like that's also intended to cover paid sick leave. Um, the Premier had wanted Ottawa to fund that through the existing EI program, not just money passed to the province. Do you have any idea what Ottawa has decided upon here? If it's giving BC money, does that mean it's not coming through EI? Is it just a, an amount and BC has to manage it? Or, or what have you heard from Ottawa on this? Uh, at this point, we've heard the announcement, uh, as you've heard the announcement, Rob, uh, and those are exactly the kinds of questions we have. Uh, in many cases, as we found with the programs that have been put in place for COVID, it makes sense if you've got an existing program to be able to utilize that existing program rather than create an entire system. It's why the Premier has been talking about the employment insurance program. It seems a natural to utilize that for sick leave uh, during the, the pandemic, uh, but we have none of those details at this point. So that's why I mentioned the long list of ideas that are included in these dollars. Uh, we'll want to see the details before we uh, make any kind of commitment and before we're able to show where those dollars might be able to flow to. Uh, last question, Mary Brooks, West Shore Voice. I guess not, no Mary? <laughs> Okay, well, I think that uh, oh, wraps sorry. Oh, there she is. Oh, and, uh, I was on mute. I'm really sorry. Um, the employment numbers are just that, um, people in regular jobs. But during COVID, we've seen the strength of the gig economy and people already um, in home-based businesses and, and being shifted to home-based employment. So I'm just wondering if you see gig and home-based being something that's stronger and um, or just off-grid and temporary and whether or not in your statistics and encouragements to people um, to stay in those tracks or to everyone just try and go get, get a regular job. I hope that makes sense. Well, I think everybody has to make their own decision. I think there's no question that the gig economy is a large part of, of British Columbia. If you talk to people who are in arts and culture, for example, or tech, uh, there are many folks who've created small businesses over this time period at home or shifted their business to home to be able to operate. So uh, that's really a choice that each individual has to make when they're looking at economic 
economic recovery and their own circumstances and their own family, but I expect it to continue to be a large part uh, of British Columbia's burgeoning economy and economic recovery. Certainly when it came to the benefits for COVID-19, uh, we in fact pushed the federal government to make sure that they were recognizing the gig economy, people on short-term contracts, people that were working simply on contracted work, the arts and culture industry, and we're pleased to see that a lot of that was actually included uh, in the benefits that were there. So um, it will, I'm certain, be part of our discussion around economic recovery, uh, and I know the industries themselves are putting together some ideas and some approaches to strengthen their industry as well. That's all the time we have for today. Thank you. Great. Thank you.